Room twelve of the Kalevala. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kalevala, compiled by Elias Londrot, translated by John Martin Crawford. Room twelve. Kiliki's broken vow. Lemminkainen, artful husband, reckless hero, Kaukumieli constantly beside his young wife, passed his life in sweet contentment, and the years rolled swiftly onward. Ati thought not of the battles, nor Kiliki of the dances. Once upon a time it happened that the hero Lemminkainen went upon the lake of fishing, was not home at early evening as the cruel night descended. To the village went Kiliki, to the dance of merry maidens, who will tell the evil story, who will bear the information to the husband Lemminkainen? Arti's sister tells the story, and the sister's name, Einiki. Soon she spreads the cruel tidings, straightway gives the information of Kiliki's perjured honor. These the words Einiki utters arti my beloved brother to the village went kiliki to the hall of many strangers to the plays and village dances with the young men and the maidens with the maids of braided tresses to the halls of joy and pleasure lemminkainen much dejected broken-hearted flushed with anger spake these words in measured accents mother dear my grey-haired mother wilt thou straightway wash my linen in the blood of poison serpents in the black blood of the adder i must hasten to the combat to the campfires of the northland to the battlefields of lapland to the village went kiliki to the play of merry maidens to the games and village dances with the maids of braided tresses Straightway speaks the wife Kiliki, My beloved husband Arti, Do not go to war, I pray thee. In the evening I lay sleeping, Slumbering I saw in dreamland Fire up shooting from the chimney, Flames arising mounting skyward From the windows of this dwelling, From the summits of these rafters, piercing through our upper chambers roaring like the fall of waters leaping from the floor and ceiling darting from the halls and doorways but the doubting lemminkainen makes this answer to kiliki i discredit dreams o women have no faith in vows of maidens faithful mother of my being hither bring my mail of copper strong desire is stirring in me for the cup of deadly combat for the mead of martial conquest this the pleading mother's answer lemminkainen son beloved do not go to war i pray thee we have foaming beer abundant in our vessels beer of barley held in casts by oaken spigots drink this beer of peace and pleasure let us drink of it together spake the hero lemminkainen i shall taste no more the viands in the home of false kiliki rather would i drink the water from the painted tips of birch oars sweeter far to me the water than the beverage of dishonour at my mother's home and fireside hither bring my martial doublet bring me now the sword of battle bring my father's sword of honour i must go to upper northland to the battlefields of lapland there to win me gold and silver this the anxious mother's answer my beloved kaukumieli we have gold in great abundance gold and silver in the storeroom recently upon the uplands in the early hours of morning toil the workmen in the cornfields ploughed the meadows filled with serpents when the ploughshare raised the cover from a chest of gold and silver countless was the golden covered hid beneath the grassy meadow this the treasure i have brought thee take the countless gold in welcome 
spake the hero lemminkainen do not wish thy household silver from the wars i'll earn my silver gold and silver from the combat are to me of greater value than the wealth thou hast discovered bring me now my heavy armor bring me too my spear and broad sword to the northland i must hasten to the bloody wars of lapland thither does my pride impel me thitherward my heart is turning i have heard a tale of lapland some believe the wondrous story that a maid in pimentola lives that does not care for suitors does not care for bearded heroes this the aged mother's answer warlike arte son beloved in thy home thou hast kiliki fairest wife of all the islands strange to see two wives surviving in the home of but one husband spake the hero lemminkainen to the village runs kiliki let her run to village dances let her sleep in other dwellings with the village youth find pleasure with the maids of braided tresses seeks the mother to detain him thus the anxious mother answers do not go my son beloved ignorant of poor witchcraft to the distant homes of northland till thou hast the art of magic till thou hast some little wisdom do not go to fields of battle to the fires of northland's children to the slaughter fields of lapland till of magic thou art master there the lapland maids will charm thee terrylanders will bewitch thee sing thy visage into charcoal head and shoulders to the furnace into ashes sing thy forearm into fire direct thy footsteps spake the warlike lemminkainen wizards often have bewitched me and the fascinating serpents lapland wizards three in number on an eve in time of summer sitting on a rock at twilight not a garment to protect them once bewitched me with their magic this much they have taken from me this the sum of all my losses what the hatchet gains from flintstone what the ogre bores from granite what the heel chips from the iceberg and what death purloins from tombstones horribly the wizards threaten try to sink me with their magic in the water of the marshes in the mud and treacherous quicksand to my chin in mire and water but i too was born a hero born a hero and magician was not troubled by their magic straightway i began my singing sang the archers with their arrows sang the spearmen with their weapons sang the swordsmen with their poniards sang the singers with their singing the enchanters with their magic to the rapids of the rivers to the highest fall of waters to the all-devouring whirlpool to the deepest depths of ocean where the wizards still are sleeping sleeping till the grass shoots upward through the beards and wrinkled faces through the locks of the enchanters as they sleep beneath the billows still entreats the anxious mother still beseeches lemminkainen trying to restrain the hero while kiliki begs forgiveness this the language of the mother do not go my son beloved to the villages of northland nor to lapland's frigid borders dire misfortune will befall thee star of evil set lower thee lemminkainen's end destruction couldst thou speak in tongues a hundred i could not believe thee able through the magic of thy singing to enchant the sons of lapland to the bottom of the ocean does not know the teori language canst but speak the tongue of suomi canst not win by witless magic lemminkainen reckless hero also known as kaukumieli stood beside his mother combing out his sable locks and musing brushing down his beard debating steadfast still in his decision quickly hurls his brush in anger hurls it to the wall opposing gives his mother final answer these the words that arty uses dire misfortune will befall me some sad fate will overtake me 
evil come to Lemminkainen when the blood flows from that hairbrush, when the blood oozes from those bristles? Thus the warlike Lemminkainen goes to never pleasant Lapland, heeding not his mother's warning, heeding not her prohibition. Thus the hero Kaukumieli quick equips himself for warfare, on his head a copper helmet, on his shoulders caps of copper, on his body iron armor, steel the belt around his body, as he girds himself for battle arty thus soliloquizing. Strong the hero in his armor, strong indeed copper helmet, powerful in mail of iron, stronger far than any hero on the dismal shores of Lapland. Need not fear their wise enchanters, need not fear their strongest foemen, need not fear a war with wizards. Grasped he then the sword of battle, firmly grasped the heavy broadsword that Tuoni had been grinding, that the gods had brightly burnished, thrust it in the leathern scabbard, tied the scabbard to his armor. How do heroes guard from danger? where protect themselves from evil heroes guard their homes and firesides guard their doors and roofs and windows guard the posts that bowl the torchlights guard the highways to the courtyard guard the ends of all the gateways heroes guard themselves from women carefully from merry maidens if in this their strength be wanting easy fall the heroes victims to the snares of the enchanters furthermore are heroes watchful of the tribes of warlike giants where the highway doubly branches on the borders of the blue rock on the marshes filled with evil near the mighty fall of waters near the circling of the whirlpool near the fiery springs and rapids spake the stout heart lemminkainen rise ye heroes of the broad sword ye the earth's eternal heroes from the deeps ye sickle bearers from the brooks ye crossbow shooters come thou forest with thine archers come ye thickets with your armies mountain spirits with your powers come fell hissy with thy horrors water mother with thy dangers come o wellamo with thy mermaids come ye maidens from the valleys come ye nymphs from winding rivers be protection to this hero be his day and night companions bodyguard to lemminkainen thus to blunt the spears of wizards thus to dull their pointed arrows that the spears of the enchanters that the arrows of the archers that the weapons of the foemen may not harm this bearded hero should this force be insufficient i can call on other powers i can call the gods above me call the great god of the heavens him who gives the clouds their courses him who rules through boundless ether who directs the march of storm winds uko thou o god above me thou the father of creation thou that speakest through the thunder thou whose weapon is the lightning thou whose voice is borne by ether grant me now thy mighty fire sword give me here thy burning arrows lightning arrows for my quiver thus protect me from all danger guard me from the wiles of witches guide my feet from every evil help me conquer the enchanters help me drive them from the northland those that stand in front of battle those that fill the ranks behind me those around me those above me those beneath me help me banish with their knives and swords and crossbows with their spears of keenest temper with their tongues of evil magic help me drive these lapland wizards to the deepest depths of ocean there to wrestle with wellamo then the reckless lemminkainen whistled loudly for his stallion called the racer from the hurdles called his brown steed from the pasture threw the harness on the courser hitched the fleet foot to the snow sledge leaped upon the highest crossbench 
cracked his whip above the racer, and the steed flies onward swiftly, bounds the sleigh upon its journey, and the golden plain re-echoes, travels one day, then a second, travels all the next day northward, till the third day evening brings him to a sorry northland village on the dismal shores of Lapland. Here the hero Lemminkainen drove along the lowest highway, through the streets along the border, to a courtyard in the hamlet, asked one standing in the doorway, Is there one within this dwelling that can lose my stallion's breastplate, that can lift his heavy collar, that these shafts can rightly lower? On the floor a babe was playing, and the young child gave this answer, there is no one in this dwelling that can lose thy stallion's breastplate, that can lift his heavy collar, that the shafts can rightly lower. Lemminkainen, not discouraged, whips his racer to a gallop, rushes forward through the village on the middle of the highways to the courtyard in the centre, asks one standing in the threshold leaning on the penthouse door-posts, Is there any one here dwelling that can slip my stallion's bridle, that can lose his leathern breast-straps, that can tend my royal racer? From the fireplace spake a wizard, from a bench the witch made answer, thou canst find one in this dwelling that can slip thy courser's bridle that can lose his heavy breastplate that can tend thy royal racer there are here a thousand heroes that can make thee hasten homeward that can give thee fleet-foot stallions that can chase thee to thy country reckless rascal and magician to thy home and fellow minstrels to the uplands of thy father to the cabins of thy mother, to the workbench of thy brother, to the dairy of thy sister, ere the evening star has risen, ere the sun retires to slumber. Lemminkainen, little fearing, give this answer to the wizard. I should slay thee for thy pertness, that thy clatter might be silenced. Then he whipped his fiery charger, and the steed flew onward swiftly on the upper of the highways to the courtyard on the summit when the reckless lemminkainen had approached the upper courtyard uttered he the words that follow o thou hissy stuff this watch-dog lempo stuff his throat and nostrils close the mouth of this wild barker bridle well the vicious canine that the watcher may be silent while the hero passes by him then he stepped within the court-room, with his whip he struck the flooring. From the floor arose a vapour, in the fog appeared a pygmy, who unhitched the royal racer, from his back removed the harness, gave the wary steed attention. Then the hero Lemminkainen carefully advanced and listened. No one saw the strange magician, no one heard his cautious footsteps heard he songs within the dwelling through the moss stuff chinks heard voices through the walls he heard them singing through the doors the peals of laughter then he spied within the court rooms lurking slyly in the hallways found the court rooms filled with singers by the walls were players seated near the doors the wise men hovered skilful ones upon the benches near the fires the wicked wizards all were singing songs of lapland singing songs of evil hissy now the minstrel lemminkainen changes both his form and stature passes through the inner doorways enters he the spacious court hall and these words the hero utters Fine the singing quickly rending, good the song that quickly ceases. Better far to keep thy wisdom than to sing it on the house tops. Comes the hostess of Poyola, fleetly rushing through the doorway to the centre of the court room and addresses thus the stranger. Formerly, a dog lay watching was a cur of iron colour, fond of flesh, a bone devourer, loved to lick the blood of strangers. Who then art thou of the heroes? 
who of all the host of heroes that thou art within my court rooms that thou comest to my dwelling was not seen without my portals was not scented by my watchdogs spake the reckless lemminkainen do not think that i come hither having neither wit nor wisdom having neither art nor power wanting in ancestral knowledge lacking prudence of the fathers that thy watch-dogs may devour me my devoted mother washed me when a frail and tender baby three times in the nights of summer nine times in the nights of autumn that upon my journeys northward i might sing the ancient wisdom thus protect myself from danger when at home i sing as wisely as the minstrels of thy hamlet then the singer lemminkainen ancient hero kaukumieli quick began his incantations straightway sang the songs of witchcraft from his fur robe darts the lightning flames out shooting from his eyeballs from the magic of his singing from his wonderful enchantment sang the very best of singers to the very worst of minstrels filled their mouths with dust and ashes piled the rocks upon their shoulders still the best of lapland witches still the sorcerers and wizards then he banished all their heroes banished all their proudest minstrels this one hither that one thither to the lowlands poor in verdure to the unproductive uplands to the oceans wanting witting to the waterfalls of ratia to the whirlpool hot and flaming to the waters decked with sea foam into fires and boiling waters into everlasting torment then the hero lemminkainen sang the foemen with their broad swords sang the heroes with their weapons sang the eldest sang the youngest sang the middle-aged enchanted only one he left his senses he a poor defenceless shepherd old and sightless halt and wretched and the old man's name was nasset spake the miserable shepherd thou hast old and young enchanted thou hast banished all our heroes why hast spared this wretched shepherd this is a lemminkainen's answer therefore have i not witched thee thou art old and blind and wretched feeble-minded thou and harmless loathsome now without my magic thou didst in thy better lifetime when a shepherd filled with malice ruin all thy mother's berries make thy sister too unworthy ruin all thy brother's cattle drive to death thy father's stallions through the marshes over the meadows through the lowlands over the mountains heeding not thy mother's counsel thereupon the wretched nasset angry grew and sore for vengeance straightway limping through the doorway hobbled on beyond the courtyard over the meadow lands and pastures to the river of the deathland to the holy stream and whirlpool to the kingdom of tuoni to the islands of manala waited there for kaukumieli listened long for lemminkainen thinking he must pass this river on his journey to his country on the highway to the islands from the upper shores of poya from the dreary sariola end of room twelve kiliki's broken vow recording by suman barua